And I asked her like preferences of colors and she was like, coral, absolutely coral. And I was like, really? And, and she was like, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter that we don't have anything else that goes with it. I will get other things for that room that goes with coral. I want coral so bad. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on The Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Ryan Rappersad so we can share our experiences with the Google Home Mini. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO36. All right, Ryan, so this is the second generation kind of Google Home product. I'd say that's fair. First party anyway, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and it is kind of the the they they're doing like a simultaneous step down and step up, mm-hmm. right? Um, from the original one, so this is the step down. Yes, and in and, and the 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 step up and down are not equal in this case. Um, no. So the regular Google Home costs mm-hmm. about what, roughly a hundred dollars, often sixty, seventy, eighty. Is it okay? I I only remember what the launch price was, which was one hundred and thirty. Oh my gosh, that's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you can get the Google Home, the normal one, yeah, or maybe eighty dollars. Okay. Days. Okay. It, there's often a sale or something. Sure. And that's the one that looks like an air purifier, air freshener. Yes, air freshener. Yes. Um. So the, the the product we're talking about today is the Google Home Mini, mm-hmm. which means it's smaller. Yep. Uh, and it's you know pretty much cheaper. Um, Always cheaper. Hopefully, I think. <laughs> um, but this the step up that we're not talking about is drastically more expensive. Oh yeah. Than the regular Google Home mm-hmm. by so much that it's almost laughable. Yeah. Yeah, because that because the Google Home Max is like four hundred bucks or whatever yeah, at launch, and it, and, it, and it hasn't launched yet. Is that correct? I, I believe you're right. Yeah, so we'll we'll see if that one goes as well. Um, I think the the Google Mini launch has been pretty good. It's been fairly good. Yeah, yeah. There there were some hiccups before launch happened. Right at launch, yeah. When it shipped, there were some issues with some of the physical hardware buttons. Yeah, and specifically, this was like the the copies that were given to journalists like at the at the event itself right. right for them to start reviewing something like that yeah um and and like those those problems had to do something with like uh the tapping mm-hmm. on the top detection and so like the the result was like it was getting a lot of false positive like taps or something like that right and so the google home minis were like listening when they shouldn't have been mm-hmm. um and so basically what what google did was they just like pushed out a software update to disable that feature period um so and that affects a few other things like you can't actually use you you can't like tap on the top to make it stop doing something you have to speak to it in order to right. make it stop um, and and so like it's it's a shame that this you know, really good product, you know, despite that one thing mm-hmm. was plagued by all these issues. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm pretty sure the mini physically launched, I think we heard about it at IO mm-hmm. in 2017, yes. but it launched closer to the time when the pixels were coming out. Right. The fall uh, event. And the pixels were also plagued with some technical difficulties and it was kind of just a blanket shame <laughs> that, um, Google had such a hard time with some other hardware. Yeah. Luckily, my my Pixel 2 didn't have any. Yeah, it's the one good one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the 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 appeal of the Google Home Mini is that you get like all of the same functionality basically as the original Google Home, but in a like half price, half half height <laughs> package, right? Yeah. Um, the the speakers on it are going to be you know quite a bit less impressive than the the original Google Home. Um, and uh but like other than that i think it's pretty much going to be the same thing yeah it, and and it's despite being maybe less impressive as you say and i don't i don't listen to tv or speakers exactly um it's still surprisingly loud and good sounding mm-hmm. for its little size yeah so where did you where did you put your google home mini so i have two of them actually so okay. i have the regular google home on the main floor of the house mm-hmm. and so we have kind of an open floor plan so yep. it's in the middle of all the rooms so you can be anywhere and talk to it. I have one right behind us in the studio viewing room, Yep. Uh, which is the room that's adjacent to the studio. Mm-hmm. And then I have one on the third floor, um, second floor, whatever, <laughs> two floors up. Sure. Whatever that means. Um, and it's also kind of just in the hallway so that anybody could talk to it if they kind of spoke at a distance. Okay. Um, 
and so far they don't get any use. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame. Um, but uh, they're there, right, for someone to use them. Yeah. So we we took ours because uh, I got one of the like the free one with the Pixel Two, right? Uh, and uh, and we're going to be getting another one since we bought another Pixel Two. Nice. Um, but we like we put one of them in our bedroom, uh, mm-hmm. and so that's a, a smaller room than the original Google Home is in. Like yours, I've got it in like the living room, which is kind of an open floor plan, and yep. it has to it has to be able to hear people from really far away and like project to really far away. Right. Um, I haven't had any problems with the Google Home Mini like being loud enough to fill my room. Yeah. Because it's you know it's not a huge room. Mm-hmm. So. So. Have you noticed like how many variations of sound level there are? E- I mean, it gets really loud and it gets really quiet. Well, no, but like on the physical device, like it'll show you like how many oh. sound circles there are. I think it's uh, I think there's four. I actually am not looking at it nearly as often as I look at the original one okay. because it's on like my nightstand and mm-hmm. so I don't have a clear line of sight okay. to that. Usually. So I think there's four little circle sounds. Okay. Whereas on the, you know, regular home, mm-hmm. there's I don't know eight ish, something like that. Yeah. And at at level four, the little home mini is very loud. Okay. Yeah. In my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do they for those for those little lit up circles? Do they have like different levels of like brightness to indicate like whether it's a full circle or like a half circle kind of thing? I think. Mm, I was under the impression they weren't on if you didn't swipe that way. Okay. Maybe. I don't know for <laughs> sure. Like you, I'd also never see the thing because I never use them. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe you need to find some other places in the house to put them where well, people actually hang I'm r- out. Running out of room. <laughs> yeah. We're going to just start talking to each other at this point. That would be, that'd be interesting. I have seen videos, you know, when the first Google Home came out of, like, people getting the Alexa yeah. and the Google Home to talk to each other and, you know. Yep, yep. So, since it is a, a lower price, um, how do you like? How do you feel about that? I feel great. I <laughs> I agree. I think that like the fifty dollar price point is much closer to like what this kind of device should be, mm-hmm. um, and especially since like the holiday season two thousand seventeen, both Google and Amazon were like pulling out all the stops to try and get everybody to buy some. You know. So I think during Black Friday in 2017 yeah um you could buy a google home mini at target and then get a ten dollar gift card okay for thirty dollars so, yeah and yeah. that's super cheap mm-hmm. um, and and like if you bought just about anything from google they were gonna like throw in a good free google home mini yeah you like know, with please it. let us track you in your house please <laughs> yep, yep yep yeah and, and i mean it's it's not quite at like the Chromecast level of like, holy crap! Like, why don't I just buy fifty of these? Well, the utility is different. Yes. So even even if they're the same price, hypothetically, mm-hmm. because of all the sales and well, basically continuous discount, they're just different products, and I don't think yeah. they'll ever enjoy that kind of penetration. Right. But also, like for the for the Chromecasts, it does uh, you, it does require you to like if it's if it's the video one, you know. You can only buy as many of those as you have TVs. I have a lot of those. And <laughs> don't watch them, but I have. <laughs> yeah, um, I only have one in uh, my house, you know. So. And then the Google or the Chromecast audios, you know, like you're going to need some speakers to go along right. with those, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So um, the Google Home does have the advantage of just like being a full package on its own. Yeah. Um, so the, the Google Home Mini uh, is powered over micro USB. Yep. Um, which I have kind of mixed feelings about. Like, on the one hand, it is a device that I'm just plugging in and never touching again, right? Nope. So it doesn't really matter what nope. it's it's powered over. But, like, I do, I want more things to be well, U- my, or USB-C. Like, I agree. And I can totally understand the reason they did it. Because, you know, they called up some OEM in China, like, hey, can you make this thing for us? And they mm-hmm. said, sure. And they're like, okay, well, do you want it to cost... $55 or $50? Oh, yeah. And they said, well, we want it to be $50. Okay, well, we're going to use USB micro, Mic- micro, mi- micro yes. B, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. I don't even know what it's called anymore. The old one. Yeah, the old one. And that's what happened, and I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Actually, the other end of the charger is really, really cute. The uh, the the side that you plug into the wall. I never right? noticed. It's, it's round and like just, it, it doesn't look like your typical outlet i mean they make nice chargers but uh, you know google mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Now, they were really, really proud of the colors that they came up with. It well, it this. wasn't really blue. No. So I don't know if they should be that proud. <laughs> they did talk about in, in like the keynote, they were like, yeah, it took us like 80 different iterations just to get the chalk color just right. Um, is, that, is that supposed to be the black one? No, the chalk is the white one. Oh, gosh, it's yeah. so dumb. The charcoal is the black one. Oh. And then the coral is the like orange. reddish orange. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they, they do look pretty nice because they're they're like this kind of fabric covered material, right? Yeah. Um kind of the, the same sort of material as like the Google Home had on its on its lower third, right? Yeah. Uh well, but so it you covers remember the, the dream of the original Google Home that you were supposed to have those interchangeable yeah. bottom third plate cover things mm-hmm. and you were just supposed to swap them out when you ordered it, and then it's like why am I going to waste another ten dollars on that? Exactly, and oh, also right, I'm not. And also, like, why am I going to buy another one in order to like take off the one that I currently have? And like, where am I going to put that? It doesn't serve it, any purpose at that point. And so I think Google realized that that's not a good way to customize a product. You no. just have to ship it with the thing that yeah. a person wants. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, what color did you get? So I have a black one and I have a coral one. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, when I was when I was picking the colors i was like thinking about the things that we have in our bedroom you know and so i was like okay well you know probably not the coral color so we because we don't really have any other red stuff in there and and i like and i texted savannah and i asked her like preferences of colors and she was like coral absolutely coral and i was like really and and she was like yeah yeah it doesn't matter that we don't have anything else that goes with it i will get other things for that room that goes with coral i want coral so bad that's so funny (laughs) yeah 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 We'll see what color we go with for the one that's going to be uh, in the in the kitchen, because mm-hmm. um, that's uh, that's like the the one communal space that we still don't have a Google Home in. Yeah. Um, and actually, it is going to be kind of nice because we have like a speaker system in there already, so I can just set that speaker system as the default playback device for for any audio media from you know when you're talking to that particular Google Home. Right. So. Avoiding having to, you know, buy a Google Home Max in order to be able to interface with all these big speakers. Oh my gosh, what an ingenious idea. Yeah. Hmm. It's almost like Google doesn't want me to buy this $400 giant Google Home Max. Would be the first time they don't want you to buy something. (laughs) Yeah. So we talked about how this has like all the same capabilities as the full-size Google Home. And last time we reviewed the google home was over a year ago right it's been a while it was in december of 2016 Hmm. so have there been any new developments since then like three or four yeah i was i was hoping for a lot more things um and i mean to their credit like google has added a lot more partners on the like smart home control side of things and and it's actually an extensive list so Mm -hmm. Um, I was under the impression that our Wi-Fi enabled Honeywell thermostat wasn't, you know, smart right. like that. Like I can use the Honeywell website to change it, <laughs> but I didn't think I could use the Google Home to change it. Right. But it turns out it works just fine. No problem. Nice. Nice. So they have hundreds of devices that will actually cooperate with, mm-hmm. the, with the home devices, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, now, and it makes me wish that I had more smart home things because, like, just like you, I, I only have a thermostat that works with it. So, still. the downside though is, and, and I think we'll probably talk more about this in general as we go through some of these things, mm-hmm. is that the exposure to some of these features are so bad. Oh, yeah. That you will never know they exist unless you A, listen to the show, or B, Google it. Right. Because it's impossible to know because Google does, does no effort. To tell you that anything is possible. Yeah. Whatsoever. They So they do have, like, at the beginning, the only way to find out about new features would be to, like, check back in the Google Home app itself on your phone on a regular basis to, like, and explore around to find all the new stuff. They change that app every other month as far it's as I'm true. concerned. It's true. It's true. Um, they do, they do now also have like a little checkbox in the app that says like, do you want us to email you whenever there's like cool new things going on? Okay. Yes. But like, I'm never going to see the emails because you know, inbox filters out all of these like update things that I don't actually need to care about. Um, you could pay attention to like the 
official Google blog. They they talk about things every once in a while, but again, it's buried. You know, and in again, amongst, who's going to actually do that? Exactly, because it's blog spot. Um, they also actually no, they they did recently transition to WordPress a, away from no, it's it's some really I know, I know. weird custom thing. I'm sure it's fine. Um, they do now have uh an entire website for the Google Assistant that mm-hmm. will list all of the um. I think it's mostly like the third party services that yeah. are available on there. Um and so that's that's like a great step forward because instead of having to like scroll through a single A to Z list in mm-hmm. the Google Home app, um I can just go onto that website and like search for things and you know like right. explore around by category, et Which cetera, is et much more useful for a normal person mm-hmm. to see what it can actually do. Yeah. Yeah. And it but it still really gets at like the big problem with this device, which is like the one interaction that i have with this thing which is to talk to it and have it talk back to me is not the best interface Hmm. right yeah like in order to be able to figure out what this thing can do i need to go to a completely separate interface in order to like learn about it and you know maybe that's okay for this thing because it's purpose is to be talked at and then sort Mm -hmm. of respond Mm -hmm. and configuration really isn't in that jurisdiction yes yeah right whenever you need to like reboot it or like change any settings or whatever okay google you reboot yeah i don't even know if that would work no there's no way (laughs) so well it'd be really fun if i could use my google home to restart my chromecast uh, we'll talk about that in our next episode sure yeah (laughs) um but yeah it's it's uh like i i always try to use it for like useful things right you know i i i see people like playing with their digital assistants like just you know having it say stupid stuff and i'm like yep. okay that's like why would you do that because right. you know i want i want utility out of this thing um and so i tend to only use it for things that i already know it's going to work for right, right? um which means that i don't explore it very much and, and it's like the super limited set of things mm-hmm. um and and so i do get into like a routine of like using it for the same kinds of things every day right you know like the the um, the morning report or whatever the sure. my day thing mm-hmm. feature is like super duper useful for me mm-hmm. um but like you know if they had added that after the fact i probably wouldn't have discovered it right right um and i do have like my my housemates will go and like try out new things like if they just think of something they'll like talk at the google home and i'm sitting in the living room going you know thinking to myself well, that'll never why work why are you doing that like why are you even trying <laughs> And and so it's that kind of pessimism, pessimism that Google really needs to guard against. Yeah. Because the product needs to do a way better job at telling us what it can do. And mm-hmm. I don't mean like mm-hmm. vocally. No. Yeah. I mean telling us as Google that e- either by notification or an email or, mm-hmm. or, or something that, hey, look, there's a new feature. Go try it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, and like we do, we can talk about that pessimism, but. At the same time, like I'm the one in the house who actually bought the darn thing, well, right? right? Me too. <laughs> but I and, and you know me, I'm Mister Skeptical. Yeah, yeah. A few other things that are that are actually new since last time we talked about this. Um, they do have a bunch more news podcasts that are available for the uh, morning report feature, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so I I have gone in and like changed my list a little bit uh, as time has gone on. Um, they definitely shot their like shopping list feature in the foot. I'll tell you what they really did what after it, you get done. Well, okay. So, so it used to be go through Google keep, right. And, uh, and then you could share that list with like, you know, whoever you wanted to and, you know, edit it from outside of, of, uh, the, the assistant and everything. Um, but now it makes a list, a shopping list in Google express, which is awful because it's like. Number one, Google Express isn't even an app, right? It's a website. And it, like, locks you into, like, shopping for these things from a select list of of stores that are partnered with Google Express in order to be able to deliver to you, right? Um, so it's not, it's not like a true agnostic, uh, platform agnostic, like, list anymore. And so it really, really makes you wonder, like, what set of circumstances made that come to be like were, I have the, no were idea. the apis in google keep so bad that they couldn't figure out a way to get their engine to pump stuff into it were the 
was the Google Express team manager so persuasive in the team meeting that they they were conned in to making that be the thing to was put the, stuff in. Is the Google Express uh, manager Vic Gondotra? <laughs> well, then it would be gone within a year. Um, <laughs> well, as far as I'm concerned, what Google did to this feature is they Googled it. Okay. They, they did their spring cleaning? Gosh, just... <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I can't take anything Google does seriously anymore. And so. here's the crazy thing, right? Like they changed this, and this was like the most high profile, most well documented, right? Feature. Like everybody was talking about the fact that Google like totally murdered this this uh, feature, and yet they didn't change it back. There has been absolutely no word from inside Google about like, oh, we're sorry, we messed up here. What? <laughs> google oh, man. they googled it and that was like and that was a useful feature especially if i had like a google home that was in my kitchen right i'd just right. Be, like right. i'd be in the fridge and i'd be like oh crap we're out of milk like hey add some milk and, to my and, google and it's in it and it goes to the, the 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 other features that they would have so reminders on android in general are mm-hmm. sort of in the strange mm-hmm. like i'm in four places kind of yeah. mode right now yeah because there's there's reminders in the calendar there's reminders in gmail mm-hmm. there's reminders in who knows where uh, I think there are reminders in Keep. Yes, right. You can you can pin notes in Keep and at like attach a reminder to them essentially. And, and so and then there are separate reminders on the Google Home which don't go anywhere except stay on the Google Home. Yeah, for that's the weirdest. A period of time, and Google just has no vision to connect the dots here and make a coherent system. Right, right. And that's why, like, Baffling. I think that's why I stopped making reminders by talking to the assistant and right. started making reminders exclusively by opening up inbox and creating reminders that way because yeah. i know that those reminders are going to show up in all of the various different but places wouldn't it be useful if you could actually just talk to the thing you can talk to mm-hmm. to make a reminder yeah unheard of and have that and have that reminder like show up everywhere yeah mm-hmm. yeah though like the google home does do a good job now of telling you about reminders that have come from other places sure. right so like i have had several times where i'm like i'm just like walking around and i see that the google home has like a little little light dot on yeah. it and i'm like hey what's up you know and it's like oh just wanted to tell you you had a reminder to like go and check on the the episode stats for this uh, you know a, a, the nexus episode that went up four weeks ago i'm like oh that's very helpful thank you what a contrived example that's i mean that that's my life you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you are your own network's number one fan <laughs> oh dear yeah yeah um last year we were complaining about the fact that the the each google home device could only support one google account yep. uh and we we couldn't figure out why that feature didn't exist um and now it does yeah, how is it working for you? It's working pretty well. Uh, I am the only person with a male voice who uses the Google Homes in my house, so I haven't had you know any trouble with like Savannah's voice or Liv's voice getting confused for my own. Sure. Um, we did notice today when I walked into your door and I said to your Google Home, "Who am I?" and it thought that I was Ryan. <laughs> uh, it's don't rely on that for security. No, probably not. No. So I am. Um... I am not the only person in the house that uses the Google Google Home, but I'm the only person who ever tried to configure it with okay. their voice. Uh huh. Because again, Google didn't tell anybody that they can actually do that. Oh, okay. So I knew actually, literally, like the Google Home app tells you, hey, if there's other people who use this device, tell them that they can <laughs> configure their voice. I know to do it, but nobody else knows to do it. Mm-hmm. Really, what it should do is. If my mom tries to use it, mm-hmm. it should say, hey, you're a new voice. Would you like to be configured or right, something? Like, right. it should just participate. An onboarding experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. No, no. Can't handle it. Google. Mm-hmm. You know what I find rather interesting about it is that, like, the the voice print gets synchronized via uh, across these different devices, yeah. including your Android device, mm-hmm. right? Like the the kind of the echo, I would imagine the reverb. You know, the, like things are going to sound very different on each of those different microphones. Sure. Oh yeah. So like, how does it deal with that? So it's it's really cool. So um, most you know about it. So it's the you can log into your Google account and you can listen to the things yeah. Google's recorded. Yeah, yeah. You sang to it. That's so much fun. And it is so much fun. I it, love listening to my own voice. Turns out. Turns out, <laughs> I'm the same way. Um, 
Is that bad? <laughs> mm, discussion for another day. Sure. So when you when you go and listen to it, you can actually hear all of the garbage it picks up mm-hmm. because it doesn't it doesn't do what we do here. We edit the show. Right. It does not edit the show. <laughs> um, and you can hear all these very very quiet but you know loud things mm-hmm. in, in you know in contrast to your own voice if it's any reasonable distance away. And it's just amazing right. that it can hear you. And and it kind of goes along the lines as well of of kind of making me understand why it has so many false positives. You know, like the the Google mm. Home that we have in the living room, right? There's a lot of noise that goes on there because there's people, there's the television, you know. There's um, whereas the the Google Home Mini that we have in the bedroom, like I haven't had nearly as many false positives from it. I will continue. I will speak more of that that later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. I do appreciate the new feature, uh, I believe it's called Shortcuts, where you can tell it, like, when I say one thing, do this other action, right? Mm. Um, And it's just kind of a, like, you can shorten things a bit, but I think it's kind of more of a playful thing, right? You know, like, I could tell the Google Home Mini, like, all right, turn the the thermostat down to 65 degrees every single evening, right? Mm -hmm. Or I could just say goodnight to it and have it you know so could you tell it watch out for cars and then it'll give you like your uh travel report oh for sure oh that's wonderful yep. i need to do that yep yep <laughs> um i did i did set one that i'm uh stupidly proud of myself for <laughs> i i tell it uh give me a sound check and it will count to five. Oh my gosh <laughs> yep yep Making phone calls is also new. That one's a really, really cool feature. Uh, I believe that initially it was only available for people who are like Project Fi and or Google Voice subscribers, right? Because mm-hmm. those are the people whose phone numbers Google already, had. Google already yeah, can, can manage. Um, and nowadays, no matter who you are, I think you can uh, set, your, set up your phone number with them. Uh, and but you, again... You, you probably have to verify the phone number. But again, who knows that this exists... And who knows how to set it up? <laughs> Nobody. No, you you got to go into the Google Home app. You always have to go into the Google Home app. It's, it's the worst. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, at least the Google Home app also manages things like Chromecast, right? So it's a little bit more likely that people are going to have the app installed and, you know, okay, not necessarily. Yeah. <sighs> they have added uh, more, like, video options for things that you can command the Google Home to control on your television, right? right. So uh, I believe that Netflix uh, had been added by this time last year, um, but uh, now they have like HBO, CBS, Vicky um, are all options. Netflix Great. is the only one of those that I have. Yeah, <laughs> so. I'm, I'm so happy for the others. Yeah, good job. <laughs> um, they have uh, night mode and do not disturb. Now, what does night mode mean when you don't have a screen that you can yellow shift? Well, maybe it doesn't... Um light up as much yeah that's exactly the know. leds get a little bit dimmer and Ooh. uh and you can set like a maximum volume okay for for the voice i guess <laughs> just don't use it at night i guess yeah i i mean i've never encountered the need for that because like i yeah i'm not talking to, to i'm not talking to it when it's nighttime <laughs> although the do not disturb mode does prevent uh, broadcasts from oh. going out to your. Maybe that's a new feature Google you Home. should mention. That is a new feature, yes. So if I were here uh, at Ryan's house, I could say to my phone, "Broadcast such and such a message," and it would take that recording of my voice saying such and such a message, uh, and it would play that on all of the Google Homes that are associated with my account. How long of a message do you think you can get it to play back? That's a good question. That's a good question. I should like to say broadcast and then like. We'll have but it, play uh, play a podcast episode, yeah. you know, next to it and see. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, Trolls. Man. Nobody should allow podcasters to do anything. <laughs> Apparently, you can now hook up the Google Homes to, like, Bluetooth other devices or something. I don't... I've seen that in the settings, but I've never, ever tried that out. I'm not missing it. Yeah. and I, And I'm not sure if that means that, like, it can be a speaker that will play stuff that you are playing on your phone, right? Mm -hmm. Or if the Google Home can use a Bluetooth speaker as its speaker or something. I Mm. I don't know which way it goes. That'd be cool, but I doubt it. Yeah. You doubt which one? Yes. Thanks, Ryan. (laughs) 
Oh, man. Um, and then, yeah, we mentioned that they, they now have a website for exploring all of the different services that are available on there. Um, and I believe that that's brand new, like, as of, like, they launched it during CES. That makes sense. This week. There were some so. uh, additions to the sort of Google Home device category list mm-hmm. um, at CES, and they mm-hmm. probably turned that on for uh, some of those other devices. Yeah. And, yeah, because the... Those devices that you're talking about are third party like speakers right. and a few of them have screens and stuff, right? Yeah. That you that that they are allowing those device manufacturers to like integrate the Google Assistant into it. Right. So And and so there's there's more of a need for sort of this cohesive platform that will eventually fall apart and get Googled. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Any other thoughts on, like, the new features and stuff? Uh, not so much on new features, but I can circle back to the uh, false positives if you want. Okay, yeah. So, I have a Google Home right out here. It's incidentally right in front of a TV. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you can imagine, it gets false positive <laughs> to all the time. Sure. Um, but it actually doesn't get fa- false positives by us much right. just talking. Um, it gets false positives by any noises, actually. So whether it's the cats making noises on the floor with a paper bag or it's somebody talking in Japanese on the TV, it will just wake up and start listening. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. And I don't know why, but maybe OK Google is not like the actual keyword. It's one of the keywords. And maybe there's just some like really loose heuristics that it actually listens to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to point out that my phone uh, lit up when you said that, and it. And, but then it said, "I couldn't recognize your voice. Hey, you are not Ian Buck." I'm so glad it knows who you are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, gosh, it would not be hard to like. I uh, there are so many recordings of my voice. It would not be hard to like trick a phone. Well, I'm sure you've said I'm, "Okay, Google" at least once in this show. Probably, I, you know, I'm avoiding it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened last year as well. Like I was trying to avoid saying the hot word, and you were trying to troll everybody's devices as much as you could by so saying that. I don't think that you should be playing a podcast in open air, but also, <laughs> uh, "Okay, Google." It's funny because literally earlier today I was listening to our old podcast episode about the original google home so that i could write up notes for this one and i was listening to it over the speakers you're a special kind of listener (laughs) thanks ryan yeah that means a lot to me i know speaking of podcast players um i am very very surprised that no podcast player makers right like not pocket cast not overcast not not like podcast addict nobody nobody has made a a podcast player service for the google homes Mm -hmm. aside from like the built-in one that goes through google play music yeah and that one is garbage so Uh, what do you think the reason is that nobody else has done it yeah i have no idea i I wonder if if the like so there's there's you can you can actually add commands like as a developer Mm -hmm. to the i don't know it's not a store but like to the repository of commands for google home Mm mm-hmm and I don't know if like it's limited access or if it's beta or or, or what credentials you need to get into that. Mm-hmm. But I've seen people do it. Um, so I wonder if if it's a combination of like limited awareness, like Google doesn't tell consumers what they can do, right. and they don't tell developers what they can do, and they don't tell anybody anything, and they're just going to shut it all down anyway. Mm. Huh. Hmm. But I mean, like like the developers of Pocket Cast have some like ridiculously niche google services that they tie into you know like like nearby right nobody builds in nearby no no because everybody should have it off but like but pocket cast use it right i don't know um i was so while i was searching around on that website uh for all the different services of course i discovered that each different podcast that is listed in Google Play Music has their own listing. Mm. And so I found a few of ours and I saw a button there that said, claim this if you are like the content manager for this. And I was like, yes, please. So we've got a few emails That's in uh, the Nexus TV at gmail.com, uh, you know, verifying. That's perfect. <laughs> it's so great. We'll see if that actually works because I like, I wasn't able, like, I was able to get it to start playing 99% invisible. But right. like, that's a very, That's you know, everybody has heard of that one. Very well known. Even yeah. Google. Exactly. Um, even though I was like using the correct words, right? Play 
the latest episode of the extra dimension right it could not figure out what the heck i was talking about and i don't know like i'm sure there's some googly algorithm that determines what's playable and what's not mm-hmm. um, or or like what service i'm trying to get to right because right. i think it ended up playing something from youtube instead of like from the po- the podcast's uh repository so yeah you know and then and that's another thing that google has no clue what they're doing with so often you'll ask it to do something that Google should be able to figure out or tell you that it just doesn't have it yet. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you were going to arrive and I asked Google, where's Ian Buck? (laughs) And it's like playing Ian Buck on Living Room. And then some Lord of the Rings nonsense starts playing. (laughs) Sir Ian McKellen as Gandalf. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed. So there's no reason that Google couldn't just put up a map, Mm -hmm. but, but it just it doesn't know better. And it just falls back to YouTube as its only recourse. Right. And it does that for a lot of stuff, and it's very annoying. Yeah. And I I mean, I'm surprised that you tried to get it to show me your show you my location because like Google Maps is not a thing that's built into the Chromecast family, right? Uh it can show a map, I think. Can it? Yeah. You can you can ask like show me a map of Wisconsin on Living Room. Huh. And I think it can do that. I'm pretty sure I've done that. Hmm. Okay. I've never tried. Yeah. So. We'll try later. Like, I know that you can ask it how long it's going to take to, you know, drive to somewhere or bike to somewhere or whatever. Um, and then it will, like, open up those directions on your phone. Yeah. If, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, you know, one thing that we should probably mention nah. is that, like, the all three of these devices have the advantage of, like, the user is never going to be the one who has to deal with, like, updates, right eh, and so nobody will know so they'll always be up to date because right. you'll never have people like going ah i'm working on something right now i refuse this update and then they refuse it for the next five years well it has happened it's wanted to restart when i've tr- been trying to watch something really the chromecast did that yeah it's kind of dumb that's crazy yeah, it's kind of stupid it happens at two in the morning so like how often does that happen to normal people i guess well i mean you'd think that it would have enough awareness to go like it hey has... nothing's cr- casting right now nobody's been casting for a couple of hours i think i'm gonna restart myself it has nothing so ryan hello do you think well, for one thing, do you think that this uh, Google Home Mini is like a step forward or a step backward, a step sideways for the whole? It's uh, one small step for Google hardware and a medium step in no in particular direction for their services. <laughs> I definitely think that, like, like I said uh, at the beginning, like this is the right price for this type of device. Right, I agree. Um, and. And then that also gets into the question of, uh, do I think that, like, everybody should go and buy one of these and put it in their home and stuff? Um, It really depends on... How much time you want to waste in the Google Home app. (laughs) That's what it depends on. Yeah. Um, it, It is, like, a really good way to just, like, get... a a connected speaker into your house right if you're not going to put in the effort to um set up you know a speaker system that is is connected to like a chromecast audio and stuff Mm -hmm. like that you know um then then a google home is a pretty good way um if you have if you have children in your house uh you know if you want them to have something goofy to like interact with i guess this is a good option but also like I know that I would not be able to stand having children in my house just, like, trying to talk to this stupid thing all all the time. Yeah. Um, like, I, ugh, whenever my whenever my siblings are over and they start, like, talking to it, I'm like, oh, here we go. They're going to, like, have it start playing some dumb song and I'm going to have to make it stop. And, you know, yeah, children are the worst. You just, you just got to, is that a thing? Can you do that? Like, are there parental controls for it? I have no idea. Uh, it's probably in the Let's... home app that I'm never going to look at. <laughs> Way to go, Google. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've heard that, you know, the, the options for hooking it up with like IFTTT to do like super duper custom stuff heard is also. pretty r- robust and I haven't gone and done it. And you'd think I would have because like, I'm totally so the kind much of work, but I'm totally the kind of person who would like do that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Whenever there's a Nexus podcast posted, it does something, it lights up. Sure, yeah. There That'd be fun. That'd yeah. be fun. Yeah, <laughs> I'd really annoy my housemates that way. 
<laughs> Free advertising. <laughs> uh, so the the real trick is, uh, you know, when when a new Nexus podcast episode is published, how can we get everybody's Google Homes? There you go. To light up and tell them. <laughs> they got to install the app. Yeah. Maybe maybe we actually need to go and make like a Nexus service. Hey, let me talk to the Nexus TV. Something like that. I don't know. I don't either. Uh, yeah. So, Ryan. Hello. Where can people find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at RandomR and, of course, on my website, RyanRampersed.com. And I am Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. You can find uh, links to other stuff that I make at IanRBuck.com. And thank you for listening to this episode of Second Opinion, everybody. Remember, since this is our reviews show, uh, we're always looking for suggestions for other stuff that we can review. Um, if you, you know, have bought something that uh, that you think would be awesome to review on here, you want to come on as a guest, let us know. Um, you can contact us via Twitter at the Nexus TV, uh, or you can send us an email at the Nexus TV at gmail.com. Remember, if you want to see show notes for this episode, to go to thenexus.tv slash SO36. And uh, if you want to use any part of this review, feel free to do that, because it is released under a Creative Commons attribution license. Thanks for listening. Have Have a good good one. one.